Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd Continuing on in our study of Shar Usul Sunnah by Imam Ahmed And we're using some of the shuruhat of the various ulama of Ahl Sunnah in this time To explain this very beautiful and blessed treatise in Aqidah I wanted to make a quick review of something very important especially regarding the Qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is a very important lesson we'll try to gain the benefits from Shaykh Abdulaziz al-Rajihi regarding this mas'ala of the Qadr because he brings a lot of important benefits and we'll try to make it as concise as possible Qala Imam Ahmed <coughs> Rahimahullah ta'ala Imam Ahmed said وَمِنَ السُنَّةِ يَلَّازَمَ لَتِي مِنْ تَرَكَ مِنْهَا خَسَالَ خَسَالَةٌ لَمْ يَقْبَلَهَا وَيُؤْمِنْ بِهَا لَمْ يُكُونْ مِنْ أَهْلِهَا الْإِمَانْ بِقَدْرِ خَيْرِهِ وَشَرِّ وَالتَّسْتِيقِ بِالْأَحَدِيثِ فِيهِ وَالْإِمَانْ بِهَا لَا يُقَالُ لِمَا وَلَا كَيْفْ إِنَّمَا هُوَ التَّسْتِيقُ وَالْإِمَانْ بِهَا وَمَنْ لَمْ يَعْرِفْ تَفْسِيرَ الْحَدِيثِ وَيَبْلَغُهُ عَقْلُهُ فَقَدْ كُفِيَ ذَلِكَ وَأُحْكِمَ لَهُ فَعَلَيْهِ إِيمَانٌ بِهِ وَتَسْلِيمٌ لَهُ مِثْلَ حَدِيثِ الصَّادِقِ الْمَصْدُوقِ so Imam Ahmed said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he said, <coughs> and it is uh, binding and necessary from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, from the Sunnah, meaning the Asul of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'at, the foundation of the Sunnah, that which, uh, and whoever leaves uh, a single matter of it, meaning a single matter of the Sunnah, has not accepted it in its totality has not believed in it and is not from its people, meaning they're not from Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah if they deny the Qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to have faith in the Qadr, the divine uh, decree, both its evil and its good, this is from the Sunnah. To affirm the ahadith related to it and to have faith in them, it is not to be said why or how. It is uh, rather that we should testify to its truthfulness and have faith in those ahadith. That are sound and whoever does not know the explanation of a hadith and whose intellect does not have the capacity to to understand it then that it is sufficient for them to just merely affirm the hadith or those a hadith and have faith in them since everything from the religion has been perfected for him and it is necessary for him to have faith in it and to submit to it such as the hadith uh, of the sadiq al mastuk meaning the truthful and the one who is uh, should be believed and whatever is similar to it in the matter of the Qadr meaning that, that is, the Qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala believing it, in it the khayri, khayrihi wa sharrihi is from the usul of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah and it's from the usul of Islam it's from the it's the sixth pillar of Iman in which the Hadith of Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam where uh, he asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam about Iman, about faith. And the Prophet ﷺ said, In tu'mina billahi wa malaykati wa kutubihi wa rasulihi wa yawm al-akhir, wa tu'mina bi qadri khayrihi wa shar. So the last pillar that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, he said, In tu'minu or in tu'mina bi, uh, bi qadri khayrihi wa shar. And believing in the divine destiny, the good of it, and the evil of it. And in relation to this, uh, we want to read some of the fawaiyah that uh, Sheikh Abdulaziz al Raji he, he mentioned here. He said that in relation to this, that it's an obligation upon a person to believe in the, both the good and the evil or the shar of the decree of Allah, meaning that something that we perceive, uh, we may perceive something good. And we may perceive something bad for us or something that may, a difficult masiba or trial that we may befall, befall us. But it's still, it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine hikmah and it's in accordance with his decree. Because nothing happens without the decree of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created everything and everything is in accordance with his decree. And w decree. And we'll, we're going to mention this uh, now, the Muratab al-Qadr that Shaykh Abdulaziz al-Raji, he, he mentions, and he mentions some very beneficial things. He said, Well, Iman bi Qadr yatadhaman Iman bi maratibihi al-arba, wa hiya al-ilm, wa kitaba, wa mashiyah, wa arada, wa khalq, wa al-ijad. 
So, uh, Sheikh Abdulaziz al Raji, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, he said that uh, believe in the Qadr, believing in the divine de decree of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, it includes four things, the four levels. And the first is knowledge. And then it's kitabah, meaning uh, that everything was written. So knowledge, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has knowledge over everything. And kitabah, meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written everything uh, that would happen. Wa mashiyah, wa irada. And mashiyah has to do that everything happens in accordance with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we'll, we'll explain that uh, in detail from the shaykh, hafadhullah ta'ala. Wa khalq wal ijad, meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything. Everything was created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those make up the four levels of Qadr that uh, we'll mention them again because it's very important uh, knowledge that Allah has knowledge over everything uh, kitabah that Allah wrote everything wa mashia wa irada meaning everything happens in accordance with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa khalq meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything and so then the shaykh brings after making a statement that is uh, mujmil he comes with mufassal, and this is the tariqa, tariqa ta'ahl sunnah often that you'll find the, the, the scholars, in the classic scholars as well, that they will, they will mention something in, in its general sense, then they will come and explain it in detail, give you the, the, the tafsil, the details related, if it was something that was necessary. Of course, the, the salaf, it wasn't necessary as, as much because it, the, the language was strong, and the creed was strong, and what was meant by their statements was was very well known. But now, because we've gotten further from the language and time and 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 knowledge, the level of knowledge, that we need more explanations and often and require sometimes very basic breakdowns just to be able to uh, begin to understand some of the concepts. And so, the sheikh said, he said, "For iman bi maratib al ula wa hi al ilm." يشمل إيمان بالعلم الله أزلي الماضي الذي ليس له بداية لأن الله تعالى هو الأول الذي لا بداية لأوليته أوليته كما أن أنه الآخر الذي لا نهاية لآخريته So the Sheikh said regarding knowledge the first level of Qadr he said that it is knowledge, and he said that that includes uh, believing in the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he had knowledge of, uh, uh, you know, he had knowledge in the beginning, and he'll have knowledge in the end, and his knowledge has, uh, uh, his knowledge over everything that, is, that has happened, and he is awul, he is al awul, he is the first, and there is no beginning uh, to his beginning so this is very important uh, showing us the greatness of our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala that we don't philosophize and begin to say well if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the first that means he had a beginning no we don't uh, philosophize like this and, 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 and move into issues that we have no knowledge about and that are dangerous Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the first and he has no beginning subhanahu wa ta'ala and likewise he is the last Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the first and he's the last. And there is no nihaya to his, there's no end to him being the last subhanahu wa ta'ala. His knowledge is infinite. So the shaykh then goes on display uh, to, to mention what the meaning of, um, of believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's knowledge about the qadr. He said, Like uh, it means that, for example, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, <clears throat> that he has knowledge of, of everything, whether it existed and whether it did not come into, existed, come into existence. And he knows things that are present and he knows the future, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah, the Almighty, his knowledge, he has knowledge over all things, uh, that came into his existence and that it have, have not come into existence, subhanahu wa ta'ala, because he's the creator of all things and he has knowledge over all things. And then the sheikh goes on to say, he, he brings some, some of the evidences from the Qur'an 
pertinent to the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah tabarak wa ta'ala has knowledge over everything. So that's sufficient for us to know that regarding the first level of the qadr, of the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has knowledge over everything. He has knowledge over everything that has happened, everything that could happen, everything that will happen. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, because he is the creator of the heavens and earth. And has knowledge of all, of all things. And then the Shaykh, after explaining, uh, he, he mentioned the second maratib, the second level of the Qadr. He said, Al Kitabah. He said, and this is that everything has been written. And he says, Ay, Al Iman bil Kitabah, wa anna allaha kataba kulu shay fi loh al mahfuv. Ad zawat wa sifat. Wa af'al, wa harakat, wa sakinat, wa arzaq, wa a'mal, wa akhlaq, wa sa'ada, wa shakawa, wa al-faqr, wa al-ghana, wa al-ghana, wa al-i'zaz, wa idhlal, wa al-hayat, wa al-mawt, hatta al-ajiz, wa al-kis, wa al-kis. So then he said that the second level of the divine decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to do with the kitabah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written everything in Allah al-Mahfuz and everything from, uh, you know, people and their, their souls, uh, you know, everything that exists, uh, their characteristics, their actions, their movements, their... Uh, ceasing to move or their silence or what have you, their rizq, meaning their provisions, their deeds, their manners, their happiness or their sadness, their uh, poverty or their wealthiness, uh, their life and their death, their inability to do things and their ability to do things. Everything is written by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he says, and the evidences for that are many, and he mentions the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, كَقَوْلِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى أَلَمْ تَعْلَمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ مَا فِي السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ إِنَّ ذَلِكَ فِي كِتَابٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمٍ And this is evidence for this a level of the Qadr, or the level, the level of the Qadr, is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and do you not know that Allah knows everything that is in the heavens and in the earth? Verily that, is in a book, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the Shaykh says, Wumarad bil kitab Allah al Mahfud. And what is meant by a book uh, is Allah al Mahfud. This is uh, where it's written in Jannah. Wa qal Allah ta'ala, Wa ma asaba min musibatin min musibatin fil art, wa la fi an fusikum illa fi kitab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And there isn't a trial that befalls you in the earth. Uh, or that befalls yourself, or within yourself, except that it is written in a book, except for that it's in a book, meaning, Allah al-Mafud, as the Shaykh mentions. And then he says, وَقَالَ تَعَالَى وَلَكَدْ كِتَبْنَا فِي زُبُورٍ مِّن بَعْدِ ذِكْرِ أَنَّ الْأَرْضَ يُرِثُهَا عِبَادِيَ الصَّالِحُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Anbiya, he says, and we have written in the Zabur, meaning the uh, one of the books that came before uh, the Zabur of uh, of David or Dawood, uh, which came before uh, and and before it was uh, you know or before it was the Dhikr, and the Dhikr here is mentioned. The Sheikh explains that the Dhikr here is meant. Uh, Allah al-Mahfuz again. Uh, so everything was written in the earth, uh, in the uh, in the zabur uh, that we we wrote in the zabur, and and in what came before it, in uh, that would happen in the earth, and those things that the uh, righteous slaves or or righteous um, servants of mine, meaning of Allah subhanahu wa taala, the pious ones that they would uh, inherit. So here again, these are all evidences for Allah al-Mahfuz and that everything was written in the divine decree. 
and uh, Allah, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, which also explains for us that dhikr in this ayat is me is meaning refers to Allah al mahfuz The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Wa kataba fi dhikri kull shay," that everything was written in the. Uh, Everything was written in the dhikr. And the dhikr here is ref in reference, ay aloh al-mahfuz. So everything was written uh, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa kullu shayin ahsan ahsaynahu fi imamim mubin. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in the Quran, and this refers also to aloh al-mahfuz, that everything that we have, uh, you know, decreed and... Uh, given uh, goodness or what have you is is written in Allah al-Mahfud so al bil imam al-Mubin the tafsir of that is that it is Allah al-Mahfud and then he also the Shaykh mentions Hafid Allah Ta'ala he also mentions as other evidence from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for example he mentions the hadith uh, Abdullah bin Amr radiallahu ta'ala anhu uh, كتب كتب الله المقادير كتب الله مقادير الخلائق قبل أن يخلق السماوات والأرض بخمسين ألف سنة وقال والعرشه على الماء. So he mentions the hadith that's in Muslim, the hadith of Abdullah bin Amr رضي الله تعالى عنه. in which the Prophet وسلم, said that everything that Allah wrote all the decree of the creation before it was created in the heavens and the earth by 50,000 years and then he وسلم, said وقال, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or, or then he, he said وقال, and, and his his throne is over the water. So all of this was uh, came in an authentic hadith, and we accept that and we believe in those ahadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And there are many, many other ahadith which talk about the creation of the heavens and earth and that everything was written. Uh, then the Shaykh mentioned something very beneficial about the decree and those groups that deny it from the Qadariya. He says, فَهَتَان مَرْتَبَتَان مَنْ لَمْ يُؤْمِنْ بِهِمَا لَمْ يُؤْمِنْ بِقَدْرِ وَهَتَان الْمَرْتَبَتَان أَنْكَرْتُهُمَا طَائِفَ قَدَرِيَا الْأُولَى الَّذِينَ ظَهَرُوا فِي عَسْرَ الصَّحَابَ فَكَفْرُهُمَ الصَّحَابَ So he said, in those two levels of the Qadr that we mentioned, the first one we, we mentioned was, uh, we mentioned ilm, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has knowledge of, of all things. And then we mentioned al-kitabah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wrote everything. That those two levels of the qadr, the first uh, group of the qadriya, the first sect, one of the first sects in Islam, and the, they were the first to deny the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They deny that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has infinite knowledge. And they deny that and negate that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wrote everything in Allah al-Mahfuz. And he said that they appeared during the time of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum, and the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum made takfir of them. Kafiruhum as-Sahaba. The Sahaba, they made takfir of those qadriya that deny the, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's knowledge is infinite and deny that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wrote everything in Allah al-Mahfuz. And from the Sahaba that made takfir of them, uh, Ibn Umar, um, Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu made takfir of them and other than him. And that is لِأَنَّهُمْ نَسَبُوا اللَّهِ إِلَى الْجَهْلِ لَكِنْ هَوْلَاي أَنْ قَرَضُوا وَأَنْتَهُوا وَهُمَ الَّذِينَ قَالَ فِيهِمْ الْإِمَامْ شَافِعِي رَحِمْهُ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى وَغَيْرِهِ نَاظِرُوا وَالْقَدَرِيَ بِالْعِلْمِ فَإِنْ أَقِرُوا بِهِ خُسِمُوا وَإِنْ أَنْكَرُوهُ كَفَرُوا So a beautiful Beautiful statement that he ended with regards to those two levels of uh, of the Qadr. 
he said, and so he, Sheikh uh, Abdulaziz al Raji, Allah Ta'ala, he mentioned, he said, and those two levels of the uh, the Qadr, of the divine decree, uh, that those who do not believe in them, they do not believe in the Qadr, the decree of Allah. And those two levels, as we mentioned, uh, a group of the Qadriya, they, the first group, they denied it, and they appeared during the time of the Sahaba. And then he said, and the reason the Sahaba made tikfir of them is because they associate with Allah, the creator of the heavens and earth, and the most, uh, the almighty and the all-wise, subhanahu wa ta'ala, they associate to him ignorance. They associate ignorance with Allah. You know, as, 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 as if ignorance is a characteristic of Allah, the creator of the heavens and earth, who knows all things. And, however, those people, they have disappeared, meaning those people who hold that level of misguidance regarding the Qadr, they, alhamdulillah, min fadlillah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that sect has disappeared. There are people who have effects from a other aspects of denying the Qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or are displeased with the Qadr and so forth, but those pure Qadriya like this, they no longer exist, wilillah alhamd. And they are those who Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned about them look at what these great Imams of the Salaf how they used to deal with Ahl Bid'ah and how they also understood the the, the Aqidah and Minhaj of Ahl Bid'ah they knew their their deviance and they disputed refuted destroyed their ideologies their false ideologies rahimahumullah jami'an ala kullu Salaf hadhihi umma Salaf al-Salih so Imam Shafi'i said he said, uh, "Debate." He said, "Debating, debate the qadri, the qadri, the qadriya with ilm." So those people who deny the knowledge of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and who deny the uh, that Allah wrote everything, debate them with knowledge. You know, make it a condition that 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 knowledge is a part of the debate that it has to be with ilm. And if they agree with you, then debate them. And if they deny you and disagree with you, make takfir to them. They, they, have, they have disbelieved. Now, why is Imam Shafi'i saying this? How do we understand this athar? This is beautiful. We understand this beautiful athar because those people deny, they, can, they associated ignorance with Allah, the creator of the heavens and earth. And then if they d agree to debate with you based on knowledge, that means they are affirming for themselves knowledge and they are negating knowledge for Allah, the creator of the heavens and earth. So who, who would have that much arrogance to do that? Except for a misguided, wicked shaitan. And if they deny that and say, no, we're not going to uh, debate based on knowledge or, uh, or knowledge. And that, you know, then make takfir to them because they are, they're not... Uh, <clears throat> then they have disbelieved because why because not only they negated the knowledge for themselves but they negated the knowledge for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and in the next sitting we'll explain the other two levels of the Qadr to, to finish this uh, portion of the book anything I said that was correct was from Allah anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam